Welcome back to the Real AF TV podcast, the show about fishing and random takes from Atlanta 10,000 Lakes. We are in the random take, and we are talking about food again. It's been a minute since we talked about food. It's, it's a pretty, pretty hefty topic if you look at the back catalog, I think. And the reason yeah. being, I believe, is because me and Tim are cooking friends. If you're listening to this on the Friday, you already heard that if you listen to the fishing topic. But if you're listening to sort of split out on Friday, that's the reason why I wanted to bring this topic up. We're cooking friends. Cooking friends. We became friends early in yep. high school. At the beginning yep. of high school. Yep. Yeah. It was literally the start of high school. Yep. We weren't cooking then. We were nope. just fucking eating everything in our parents' fridges. Well, I mean, I was trying. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, right, right. I knew how to make omelets pretty early on. Oh, really? Yep. Because that's a new skill for me, so we'll get into that. All right. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up, or the, 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 like, the conversation sentence, right, starter for this is, how did we get into cooking? How did you get into cooking, Tim? And how did that end up being something that we did together? Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sure, sure. But like, what was it that got you? You know, I, I've i always been kind of like a creative person. Yeah, for sure. And when I was younger... I think a lot of it was wanting to like impress my parents and stuff. Yeah. And drawing pictures and stuff always got them to be like, oh, that's pretty good, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I wanted it to be like, you know, and still to this day, I want to cook where it's not like I just know how to make something. I want to cook and have somebody go, oh, damn. <laughs> you know, like that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, for real, for real. So it's it's like I just always I don't know, I it I don't know if it's something in my like subconscious that wants everybody to tell me like that was a good job, Tim. And I just go thanks, yes, thank you for making me feel good about myself. You know I don't right, know. Right, right. But yeah, like right. I remember when I was younger that there was a time I do no idea what I was doing when I was little. Yeah. No clue well, whatsoever. Well, even high school, that's why I said it. Like, I don't even remember being dude, able to cook at 14, 15, when, 16 years old. Yeah, dude, I'm younger than that. I'm in, like, the kitchen. My parents aren't home. Uh -huh. And I'm, like, it's, like, their anniversary or something. Okay. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to make them something. I'm going to impress them, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm, like, and this was before, like, Google. So you couldn't just, like, Google anything and just be, like, oh, this is how you cook, you know? Right. Like, now kids right. can watch YouTube video and be, like, yeah. oh, that's why it didn't work. Right, right. But back yeah, then, you watch like, Master, just... Chef, Master Chef Junior, and half of those <laughs> kids are in their interviews, and they're, like, well, I just started watching these YouTube cooking videos, and you're, like, fuck you, kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're just, like, why do you think you can win this? Well, I have pretty good knife skills. I know how my flambés are on point. And you're just like, I, I didn't even know what any of those words meant. Right. I didn't have knife you know, skills knife in my vocabulary skills. when I was fucking 11 years old. Get out of here. Yeah. Shithead. Like, you mean like you can juggle them or what? No, I <laughs> cut the food well. And you're like, we can all cut food. And like, I, can, I cut it accurately I thin could, slices really good. fast. And I don't <laughs> chop my fingers off. And you're like, oh, okay. Okay, mm. Mm. but <laughs> but uh, so I remember one time where I wanted to make something for them, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I grabbed like just ingredients out of the fridge, and I remember getting like some ham, and it's just like deli ham, and I chopped this up into little tiny pieces, and I'm like taking my time dicing it up. I microwave that because I'm like, and now you cook it right or whatever, and then right. I cook and I microwave that, and it heats up. And then that's as far as I got before. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? And then they came <laughs> home and I wanted to keep it as a surprise. So I like put it in a cupboard. In a cupboard. And then I forgot about it. Oh, and no. And a while later, they're just like, oh, what is this? And I'm just like, oh, that's ham. And they're like, you need to refrigerate meat. And I'm like, but I like cooked it. And they're like, you can't even after it's cooked or whatever. It has to go back in the fridge. 
I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, honestly, I forgot about it. Like, I was going to try to cook for you guys. And then I hit it. And then I forgot what I was doing because I just kind of went off on this whim. So that was like one of the first times I ever tried was I just diced and microwaved the ham and then hit it in the cover. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love that so much because i don't even i don't even remember having any of that any of that i was just a lazy kid who just made sandwiches all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh dude i made my share of peanut butter and jelly and i'm weird with it like to this day i don't like yeah. doing peanut butter on one side jelly on the other i put peanut butter on there i put jelly on it and then i stir them together no way. That's good. Yeah, and then I spread it out, and then I put it. I like to have it. Like, so you have a separate dish? No, nah, I put I stirred together on top of one of the pieces of bread. Really? Yep. <laughs> With all. Dude, I've just been like uh, all my okay. life. Like, I just want even bites. I don't want it to, like, screw up. And. Yeah, I get that. Uh, the jelly doesn't, like, squeeze out when you do it like that. Because it Serving. becomes, like, the same viscosity as the peanut butter? Yeah, it's, like, pasty. No kidding. So you don't have to worry about like squeezing out all that shit. It makes oh, it like shit. a little bit less pasty than peanut butter, but way less runny than jelly. <laughs> right. Oh so and the weird thing was is like just... one time like we saw that Smucker's stuff in the grocery store where it's like goober? the peanut butter and jelly together. Is was that what it's like the goobers? Goober, dude. I remember and my goober. wife was like, goober That's goober perfect. You're gonna want that. And I'm just like, Hell no. I, no, I stir it together myself. No, I just made... no shortcuts in my house. <laughs> you got me thinking now i'm like oh i should just put peanut butter and jelly into the same fucking container mix it up and then just have them ready bread, to go. just have a oh. peanut butter and jellies did we just hack fucking peanut butter and jellies that's going to be the name of the split when it comes out peanut yeah. butter and jelly hack we'll put it in a jar and just call it the hack just call it and the hack of, it sounds a lot better than goobers oh, fuck <laughs> Who came That's, up with that shit? Everybody's going to want to eat goobers. Are they? That sounds uh, disgusting. Are they? Are they, though? <laughs> goobers. Why don't you, call, you just call that shit loogies? <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. Which I, I had Vegemite before. Oh, yeah? yeah it's pretty. It, it It's not loogies. <laughs> but it, 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 it kind of tastes like a burnt loogie. Oh, gross. I've heard things where it's they're just so like, gross. it is disgusting. You know, I've it's heard. So gross. I brought back, I brought some back from Australia. So don't fucking at me, internet. I got it from the source. <laughs> it is fucking nasty. It's yeah, dude, nasty. I don't understand it. It, it, it tastes like my sandwich. Yeah, exactly. And it tastes like burnt loogies. And I say that only having smelled them. I spit many a loogies onto fires in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It tastes like that smell. And that is disgusting. <laughs> it tastes like that smell. <laughs> yes, it does. It's so That's gross. so gross. <laughs> it's so disgusting. I've uh, never wanted acquired to eat taste, I guess, less. right? <laughs> what? I've never wanted to eat Vegemite less. Yeah. Please. That's oh, that I've heard my bad things, point. but that sounds so gross. Dude, it's fucking it's so nasty. Anyways. So that was your that was your start. So you've kind of always always been into cooking. Is that yeah, fair a little to say? bit? Yeah, that was like the first time I ever tried to make anything. I know, like a little bit later, I got older and more sophisticated, and for it was like another anniversary thing. And I'm like, I'm gonna make my parents banana flambe. You know, Did I, you really? I, found, I found a recipe. No, here's the thing. So I found my parents don't drink. Right. The only wine I could find was some homemade shit she got from a coworker like years before, and nobody ever touched it. So I'm like, they're never gonna drink this shit. Homemade. So th there's no corkscrew. I'm trying to figure out how to get the wine out. Ever even, I pour it in there, and then come to learn, yeah, you really got to be cooking on gas to make that work. You right. can't do the flambe part on the. <laughs> <laughs> on an electric stove. Right, right, so I just got like this soupy gross mix. I don't burn off any of the alcohol. <laughs> I just kind of go. a boiling blob of. My parents come home. I just got this weird soup with bananas in it. I'm just like, I tried to make you guys banana flambe. <laughs> <laughs> 
That that was maybe like I don't know, fourteen or fifteen years old. When that I tried is to do that. awesome, dude. I didn't know nothing. I just read that. That again, like you know, no YouTube. That was just reading the instructions. Where it's just like, right. put all this, cook this, ignite the f- thing, and I'm just like, all right. Right. You know, it doesn't tell you any extra steps on how to do this. I'm just like, it's yeah. just gonna happen, right? And I'm like, I'm I'm safe enough to handle fire. I'll do this. It'll burst in the flames, and then I'll, you know, it'll be yeah. cool. I'll wait for it and to burn it off, didn't, and, and I'm just like, how come I can't? Yeah, and then I go and get like a lighter stick, and I'm trying to like light it, and just like just like it doesn't burn at all. And then like you learn that like you can't just use like a low alcohol wine either you gotta put like some like legit stuff i think <laughs> that's what i was called... gonna say i, I mean it's... at least you had the right idea to go get <laughs> yeah. the lighter that can right. work it does and work. i think it's i think it's french uh the banana flambe i think is french so i'm assuming it probably called for like cognac or something where it's right. like a 40 percent alcohol liquor yeah 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 and i just i had no idea what i was doing so <laughs> yeah i've always tried but it it took a while before I was actually like cooking. There was yeah. a lot of yep. there was a lot of trial and error and never really giving it a shot. Right. Right. Until I got old enough to like cook on my you know, where it became like I shit. needed to cook. And then I'm like, oh shit, I better learn this. And then I started learning stuff. Yeah. 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 For sure. No, that that that's that's I, I didn't have all those early stuffs because the only thing that I ever did was fucking make ramen like i was so lazy i just depended on my mom to cook good shit oh, yeah. all the time <laughs> and, and it wasn't i shouldn't say lazy yeah no that's the right term because i was also too lazy to just get up and get a snack when i felt like it I, like, ah, I don't know this video game's better i'm fine i'm just gonna keep going <laughs> it also led to some dehydration but the point is because <laughs> i wouldn't get up and get water either right. um <laughs> The, the point that I'm trying to make is I didn't, I didn't have that early go like you did. I didn't have that early, uh, want to create like you did. Sure. I'm a creative person. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I very much own that and, and say that and like work in the creative, you know, the podcast is creative. That's just an example of it. the, the the part that I started to figure out about food was that it's creative after I started cooking or that was the motivation to start cooking. Almost. It was like, I saw ratatouille. Oh because yeah. I'm that person, right? Like I'm the, the technology, like I've always been a big Pixar fan. Like I've always been a big fan of CG. It's like, Holy shit. That just made me, think completely different and it's so fucking weird to think about that it was a pixar movie that made me think differently (laughs) about food it made me see that creative spark when i was already doing creative i I remember video editing and watching ratatouille in the background just like that was my background tv and at some point it just like clicked do you know what I mean? Yep, I get it. So it was it was very very weird for me, but also not out of character, I guess. Like, it, it, yeah, of course you would get it from that you nerd, you geek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so I didn't get into it until you know early two thousands. Like I didn't get into cooking until the early two thousands. Okay, really. just sure. like looking back on it. And it was just kind of garbage food until then. That was the other thing that I realized is just like, just would go buy shit that would just go in the microwave. Oh, yeah. That would just go, uh, that was it. (laughs) Anything that could go in the (laughs) microwave or a frozen pizza. (laughs) Sure. Like that was the only time I would turn on the oven for the frozen pizza. So, that that was the weird turning point and then the recession hit it like i didn't get hit by it because i think about 2007 ish it was it was on the cusp it was hitting a few people it was hitting it had started and i had been on i had been at a company that wasn't hit by it 
Okay. And then and then it it dragged on and dragged on and dragged on and then it got him. Sure. And then I was like, oh shit, what am I doing? Like I can't. Hmm. I, it kind of hit me. I was like, wait a minute. I think because of Ratatouille, right? It made me kind of think like I think I can make that thing that I'm buying yeah. all the time and it'll be less money <laughs> because we just got hit by the recession and I think I'm going to lose my job. Sure. And there was just like the spark in that and the realization of the creativity and that I was already doing creative things. Right. And it, right. it just kind of all snowballed into one big like, yep. realization, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that happens for a lot of people. I think that's like yeah, a big reason of why I started cooking all the different things that I cook now, you know? What do you mean? It Well, like it all, you know, it all started with the, uh, we were talking about the omelets. So before yeah. I start getting into my thing, you were saying like you like just recently started doing omelets? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we can get into Let's do omelets. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> expecting it, so I wasn't fully prepared. And that's why I just put in that like buffer sentence of like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, uh, I have done omelets before, but I put okay. in time on omelets last year. Yeah. And by time, I mean, this is this is the creative part about the creative, the learning part, right? There's like, even just, just going back to the, the fishing thing is like, learn from your mistakes, right? Like the whole yeah. really FTV concept almost it, it, it's, I put in time on omelets. It was like every Sunday or every other Sunday for, you know, six months, I would yeah. say we're making omelets. We have onions, we have peppers, we have deli ham or whatever protein, you know, kind of leftover. We have yep. leftover chicken from Friday night. So Saturday oh, morning, yeah, we're doing omelets. You want, everything in there. Right. And that's th that's also the good thing about omelets, right? Yep. Doesn't matter what you put in it. It's uh -uh. about the egg. It's yeah. About the, it's, it's about the shell. And so different pans, different lubricants, the different the heat. Egg. Like I fucking went the... in last year right i just wanted to say that part not about the shell of the egg it's about the shell of the omelet which is the egg <laughs> 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 talking those words out i would have never caught that but as someone who's listening <laughs> thank you for clarifying <laughs> yeah 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 so like i found a different because uh because me and my wife have been cooking almost the whole time we've been uh, together. It, it's been one of the things that brought us together is when we started living together, we started getting all kinds of different pans. So I had all kinds of like, I got a 12, I got a 10, I got an eight, Yeah, you know, yep. like I have all these different kinds of frying pans. And so that was already there for me to start experimenting on omelets. And that is how, I said, like, I, I just started omelets and that's why, because I just started really focusing on it because of eggs were cheap. Then they're fucking ridiculous. Now, um, they're easy to put leftovers in, right? So they're the perfect yep, Saturday yep. morning gig yep. and we had the equipment already. It was just a matter of like, Hey, will this like teaspoon of butter do the trick or is it better to just put spray in it it will high heat do the trick oh yeah like it, there was there was so much it's it takes so much to just nail an omelet and i didn't look it up oh okay just i just experimented it. all right so that was so, that, that that that's the creative part of it right that's the fun of yeah. it just like discovering it for yourself so now are you are you doing it where you fold it so i do uh, fold on both sides. So crack an egg or, yep. or scramble, scramble an egg, right? Pour it in, yep. let it, let it do its thing. Center up the fillings, 
right in the yeah. middle of the circle, fold right, fold left, flip it over. Oh yeah, you do it like a Perkins style. Sure. Yeah, I do. I always do just a half, just one, so I have like a half moon. Oh. And I yeah, put yeah, yeah. more filling all the way around that. I just put all the filling on the one side and then on the I one fold side. It over. Like I got just a nice. But I wondered if you folded it because there are other ways to do it. Like I learned when we went to Jamaica. Do you rem- did you get an omelet in there? Yeah, I did. But refresh Jamaica? my memory. They take like it was like an omelet bar, and you yep. get all of your ingredients and stuff. They throw yep. it all in with the scrambled eggs. Yep. And they will take a ladle, like a, yep. just a little tiny ladle, a teaspoon of oil, put it on their hot pan. And throw the whole thing in there. They don't flip shit. They mix all the ingredients in with the egg. Cook it on one side, flip it, cook it on the other, and they give it to you. Yep. It's not, that's what an omelet is for them. And it's awesome. Yes. It's kind of like when they fry it in that oil. It's almost like a, if you ever had like an egg foo young at. Sure. The the Chinese restaurant has like a weird fluffiness to it. And I'm sure they're like yep. frying their egg like kind of the same way. And so they don't fold it. But like I learned that you take the egg and like you said you do are you doing more than one egg? Uh no. We are really? doing one egg omelet. Damn, dude. Yeah. Super I do thin. Like Just three. Fucking... I'm doing dude. like three eggs. Oh shit. Yeah, I do thick eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so so like I learned and I can't even remember where I learned it from. And because I remember like learning about it in the facts which was like the cooking class you know facts like oh if, facts the cook yeah f- family I knew, economics or whatever yeah I, don't know. I knew how to make omelets when they try to teach us how to make omelets in there so i Damn. come in there just like fucking firing it up killing it but it's like you know they're just like no you want to do this and i'm like yeah sh- i got this shit yeah go to help somebody it. else <laughs> i'm about to make and eat this omelet <laughs> Give me some space. <laughs> this is just <laughs> snack time for me, motherfuckers. Get out of here. <laughs> yep. And just, <laughs> this is completely random. I'm going to go back to the omelet in a second. I just have to say there was a girl in my facts class that was very socially awkward, never got in any trouble. And in fact, she was making spaghetti. And she was like, the way you tell if a spaghetti noodle is done is you throw it against the wall. Mm-hmm. And she said, the teacher was like, that's not how you do it. And she's like, it is how you do it. This is how I learn. And she's like, that is the teacher's like, that is not how you do it. And she was just adamant. She was like, no. I learned this way. This is how you do it. She no. pulls a noodle out, smacks it against the wall. It's stuck. She's like, it's done. And the teacher's like, go to the principal's office. No way. And I'm just like this socially awkward girl that never got in trouble. Just got detention for throwing a noodle. Like what a story she's going to have to tell to her kids later. (laughs) I got detention once for throwing a noodle at the wall. But kids, let me tell you. Nobody gets in trouble ever. Yeah. Let me tell you. It's the best way to tell you. Just probably tell her like you don't let them put you in detention for nothing. In this house, we throw noodles against the wall to tell us they're done. <laughs> we throw noodles against the fucking wall. We throw them against the wall, and if they stick, they're done. Maybe tell that bitch to go shove it up her ass or she'll think. But so anyways, in okay. like I learned how to do it where you put all the eggs in, and it doesn't like really cook on the top it, 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 properly Yeah. if you don't move it. So what you do is you put the spatula on the side of the pan and you kind of pull the eggs in and you tilt the pan so all the runny stuff runs over to that. Yeah. So when it hits the hot pan, it starts cooking that right away and then you move it over to the next side. So you're constantly like tilting the pan, pulling the egg back, pouring the uncooked stuff, tilting the pan, pulling the egg back. And you keep doing that until none of the runny stuff is left. Yeah. And then you put your toppings on. Oh. That was the first thing I ever learned how to cook properly. And then all the time I'm like, you guys want omelets? Want you want some omelets? And then every <laughs> nobody ever wanted omelets. I didn't make them bad. Just everybody right. just like, oh, we're not just really, nobody really, wanted really not feeling feeling omelets. And I'm like, well, that's the only thing I know how to make. So oh, come on, guys, but I'm good at it. <laughs> I want some toast? I, can, I know how to make toast. <laughs> I'm 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 so happy that I learned that I did learn how to cook, and that you realized early that it was creative. Which to me 
is awesome because I didn't realize that that cooking is creative. Baking is a science. Cooking is yes. creativity. Yes, right? exactly. And you you recognize that out of the gate. I didn't recognize yeah. that. It was the thing that my brain just started to connect. And then I was like, I bet you I could make food cheaper than I could buy food for. And like all the pieces just, it was just like a tumble, right? Like just yeah, everything just started to tumble well, into place. And now I have like, I'm not a high end chef by any means. So don't think that that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. No, no, no. But I go to these like mid-level restaurants, like Olive uh-huh. Garden and Red Robin makes good burgers and stuff. And I like everything sure. that they do, but I have their stuff. And sometimes it's killer. And other times I go there and it's a little bit off. Like the chef doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. So my journey as far as cooking is gone went from I want to be able to make some things good to now I go to these restaurants and I'm like, I want to be able to make your dish better than you can. Better. Yeah. I want to be able yep. to go home and just be like, why? Should I spend money at your restaurant when I know I can make it better at home for less money? Yep. Or yep. at the very least, I can make it the same. Yeah. And not my to be chicken a fucking like, snobby dickhead. No, like, totally not be a totally, snobby dickhead. But totally. like my chicken Alfredo yep. is just as good as Olive Garden's. And oh, I can yeah. spend way less money on it. Everybody yeah. gets to eat if, some. If not better. to uh, Again, not to be a snobby dick. Better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Because and the steaks and stuff too, it like, mm-hmm. and then I know I'm making them how I want them. Like if I make a good steak, I get a good cut of meat and I bring it home and I grill it up and stuff. Yep. And yep. I get that steak. It's just as good as what I could have got at Texas Roadhouse. Right. But I spent less money on it because I cooked it myself. Plus, yep. there's always that chance that the guy at Texas Roadhouse thinks that everything tastes better with too much salt because he's got a <laughs> shitty palate. Because he's not a real chef. He's some college kid that they needed help. That they needed help like, and just, yep, yep, mm, yep. It needs more salt. Yep. Just no, it doesn't. You uh-huh. don't have good taste buds after COVID. Yep. Ask oh, oh. somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, for real. So we've already picked out all the restaurants in town. Not Again, it, this sounds super snobby, but we, we already have all our restaurants picked out in town. We go, oh, yeah, they have a head chef or... They have somebody oh. that is running it that's not just hired help. Like, yeah, for sure. We, yeah, we, you it's not. Even, you learn yeah. it once you've learned how to cook food. You learn that shit, and that. Oh yeah. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. I'll I'll go to a place and I'll see something, even just like the garnish on the plate. I'm right. just like, yeah, you can. Tell that's not some, you know, that that's not there. some grade school shit. <laughs> this dude's got some skills. You know, <laughs> you see, you see something, and you're just like, oh damn. Right. Right. You know, For real. and it doesn't happen everywhere, but there's no. certain spots. And and I honestly want to be like one of those guys that's just like my compliments to the chef, you know, and oh, I, just know. Be like, I know, you know, where they just be like, this is a red robin. And you just be like, yeah, you don't understand, though. Yeah. But like, Last couple of times I was here, they oversalted the shit out of the burgers. The first couple of times we went to a red robin, my yeah. wife likes to get the royal red robin that comes with a fried egg on it. Whatever changed in Red Robin, they do not know how to make a fried egg to save their fucking life anymore. They just crack it and leave it on the thing. And the one side's like the egg's a little bit runny, but the other side's like almost black. Oh. Like you got to be cooking it on a different spot. There's got to be one of your areas that has to be a little bit cooler. You can't be cooking it on the exact same spot that you're making that burger. Right, right. And it looks like they don't even flip it. It looks like they put it on the thing and they wait until that mm. like opaqueness yep. goes to like more of a solid white and then they serve it. And it's just yeah. like, no, just cook it for a while, yeah. flip it for just a little bit just and then second. put it on the burger. Right, right. Yeah. So that was an, that was probably the latest thing I learned. Mm-hmm. For a long time, I just didn't know how to not crack a yolk, and I didn't really care because I didn't want runny yolks. <laughs> and then gotcha. my wife is like, "I really like those," and I'm just like, "I'll figure it out." Right. And now yeah. I know how. So. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. Which is a perfect example of like, how did you get into cooking? Because that is a lot of, from my story, a lot of how I got into cooking because 
I started to realize like, why well, don't necessarily like Kraft Mac and cheese, <laughs> but I love cheese and I love macaroni. So there has to be a way to get a better Mac and cheese and you just, right. you just go for it. Right. Like you just start looking things up and you start learning it. And in, in the sense of like what you're saying is just like, I don't really, I, the ruddy yolk's not for me, but somebody else in right. my life has asked for it. So I'm going to learn it. I'm, I'm taking it, you know, personally for, for me, it's, it's scrambled eggs. Sarah didn't oh, even sure. eat eggs. My wife didn't even eat eggs at all. When they're not $5 a dozen, we will start eating eggs again. And I pretty much make a scrambled egg for her every morning. And there you go. I never made scrambled eggs before as stupid as it sounds, but this takes me, it's a segue to the next part of Alton, Alton Brown, AB, Wait. Me and hold you on. have that connection. Good eats, things yeah, like hold that. On. Hold on. Hold on. So hold much on. Money. Hold on. What? What? You got to tell me about Alton Brown in a minute, like where you're going with this. But Okay. You said you're paying $5 a dozen? For eggs right now? Yeah. What the fuck are you paying? I can get like just over $5 for 24 organic eggs at Costco. What? fuck are you talking about man it's the week before two, the week before easter I can eggs went up dozen, fucking five dollars a dozen i want to say maybe it's two dozen organic eggs for like six something but i can get the regular eggs two dozen pack at costco for like five bucks what the fuck God again that's it. costco okay, prices but thing. yeah sorry we're gonna okay. talk about Alton this Brown. after the podcast god damn it because yeah, now i'm pissed Alton off Brown. but ab himself the science, the food scientist. Yes. We've talked about him before. We have talked about good eats and how that influenced us. And that was one of the things that uh, I really started to get into after I um, had that epiphany, so to say, with Ratatouille and the creativity. And like it all started to set in kind of it all kind of started to hit me like, oh, shit. And I started watching a ton of Food Network. We still watch a ton of Food Network. And Alton Brown was one of the big ones that like it really sunk in and, and still I go to, to learn from and, and that all goes to scrambled eggs. That all comes back to the scrambled egg thing that I was talking about is like who, who before you know how to cook and that's the whole point of this topic is like, learn how to cook. Just, just, just try a little bit and it'll change yeah. the way you look at food and the way that you handle your food. He yeah. has a nice tight little segment on YouTube about scrambled eggs. And it, it, it will really actually change. Like Gordon is famous on YouTube. Gordon Ramsay is famous on YouTube for doing scrambled eggs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's actually kind of a little bit of, there's an art to doing something as simple as scrambled eggs. I think the way Gordon makes scrambled eggs is a little bit gross. <laughs> honestly. So is my wife. I have to over, in quotes, overcook them. Yeah, because like, he likes them like where you're just like, you want them like moist like this. It's just like, Wet. I think you undercook your eggs, Gordon. Like, <laughs> kind of wet. <laughs> so, so where I'm going with all this is like the 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 learning from you know people on TV and and these like celebrity chefs, I guess. Right? We can say we'll just say that we'll say celebrity yep. chefs. Learning from them, love it. Do it all the time. Love cooking shows. We love it. The the thing with the scrambled eggs is all the way to Wolfgang Puck. Yep. I saw a thing where Wolfgang flat out was just like, you Americans, you worry too much about your eggs. You overcook them <laughs> all the time. <laughs> he was just like, 
gross. <laughs> it's the way he made it sound. He was just like, you're crazy that it's not how eggs are supposed to be eaten. And it made the connection with, with Gordon of just like, yeah, I guess you Europeans, you know, you, you eat eggs differently, I guess. So he was saying that we overcook them too. Oh yeah. hundred percent. He's like, stop. He, he, Cause he was working with an American on the show that I was watching. He goes, quit cooking them. You Americans, <laughs> you Dude, like him to I, Ronnie or what? I don't know why it's a Russian uh, accent. Uh, <laughs> I think they like there's too Ronnie. I mean, but he I says also, you like him. You like, yeah. Sorry, he said you. But you didn't I also say put like Ronnie. sauce on mine, so I guess they're just like everybody likes what they like. You know, a right. lot of times they're like, you know, oh, we leave them runny and like add a little bit of salt, and that's perfect. And I'm like, yeah. no, I cook them till they're not runny, and then I <laughs> douse them in hot sauce and ketchup. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like yeah. you might think it's right, gross. Right. I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so. Did you, you had before the Celebrity Chef, like you were already into cooking before the Celebrity Chef thing, but did Alton get you into yeah. it more? I mean, that's Alton, fair to Alton, say because you were before the internet even really before the internet. Yeah, was. Alton definitely helped on learning certain techniques and stuff. I started watching Iron Chef. Oh, no shit. Because there was the original Iron Chef way yeah. before the other Iron Chef. So I the started Japanese watching version? Iron Chef. Yep. So I watched the Japanese version. Fuck yeah, um, like right when I first, I got more into cooking like right when I first got my own apartment. Okay. And then I had cable myself. And yeah. then I was like, you know, once I was in control and learning like what was on TV and stuff, I'm like, there's a yeah. whole channel about cooking. You guys right. know about this shit? And then you're like <laughs> watching it. And I'm like, oh, damn, look at what he's right. doing. Right. And you're watching him like kill it so fast, you know, just like. Yeah and then like fry and then do this and all yep. this other stuff and you're watching the clock count down and you see what they make in like an hour and you're like yeah. holy shit and it's so and they didn't even organized. know what they were gonna make at first right within you know that I mean? hour they also had to come up with the idea yeah because i mean that like sparked something in me from like when i was a little kid where i'm just like what ingredients do i got diced ham microwave yep. all right yeah and then it never went any farther and i'm just like Ugh. I guess I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then you yeah. like watch these guys and they're just like, you know, they're just like, here's the secret ingredient. And then they have to use some random ass weird shit, put it right. in their dish. And then they just go and they're like, I'm cooking this and I'm doing that. And, it, you know, yeah. I watched the Americanized like dubbed over version where. You yeah, it was still the Japanese it. edit, but they had dubbed over it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is American but, yeah. Iron chef or whatever. Chef Morimoto was yep. on there yep. and stuff. Yeah, and so I remember. Host and... Yep. Yep. But I don't. I don't know if Alton was a host. Alton's a host now. Of Morimoto American. was on the original one. Oh, sorry. I thought you had already made the jump to America. Yes. yes oh yes, no! Yes. Like he he came over to the American one right. initially. Right. And then they started using all these Iron Chefs that nobody's ever heard of. They're just like these are the Iron Chefs too, and you're like they are. I don't know these people. You know, but I didn't know those other guys. I just took their word for it. Right. Because it's Japan like and you're just like, yeah, they can like cook. The, <laughs> yeah, I like the theatrics of the Japanese. Like it like was an actual like stadium that they're entering and stuff, you know? No shit. And it, it, that's kind of what it was. It was like, oh man. I and see and they time. would have all the different pictures and we'd have to choose the person. And then all of a sudden they'd just be like, I choose Chef Morimoto. And then he comes over like uh -huh. up the steps from behind and there's like a backlit like big chef's Smoke knife screen. thing and he's standing oh, okay. there like and then he, they do the pose you know uh, yeah like, oh yeah oh shit you about to get served sucker <laughs> you chose mori motu he's coming at you bro you know? right 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 <laughs> <laughs> i'm just watching that shit like it's yeah, a sporting dude. event oh my god right right it, that you is him just, just part like, of it. flash fry it and then flash freeze it and you're just like oh no it's like being on the ball court <laughs> like on the broke. playground <laughs> broke your fucking ankle son <laughs> morimoto he go flash fry and flash freeze motherfucker <laughs> you got shook <laughs> yeah dude 
<laughs> I got to see if that's on Discovery Plus because I have Discovery Plus and now I'm like, oh, do they run the Japanese versions? Because I want to see yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah. So I started watching that and then I like found Alton and Alton's just like breaking down all the science and stuff. And like yeah. the first couple of episodes, I'm like, this guy is telling me everything. Like that's everything. exactly what I want. There's something right. in my brain that wants to know why, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, yeah. like when somebody just goes, and now we do this. And right. I, I want to go like, but why? Why do right. we do that? What's the right. point of that? Yeah, and, and he's his like, the pH balance like, of the wine mixes with the, you know. Yeah, and he'll break it down. And all of a sudden, he'll have like a whiteboard, and he'll flip it over, and he'll just be like, right, and have his stick, just uh-huh. like the these molecules and these molecules, and they do this, you yeah. know. And then all of a sudden, he'll just be like, in 1843, this yep. is how they. And you're just like, holy crap! I'm getting a history lesson, and just like. <laughs> Yeah. gnarly yeah, yeah I, dude. I still remember uh learning about how to make panko breadcrumbs on there oh yeah which where... i haven't made it to i'm watching through like all the original oh, ones yeah and watching the new ones at the same time so i'm getting this mix but i haven't got to that tell the story about the pankos oh so the panko breadcrumbs he's sitting there and he's just like these panko breadcrumbs are light and crispy and he's like and they're different than other ones and it's because they use electricity to make this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what? And then he's like, look at it this way. And he takes like a screen door mm-hmm. and he takes like a batter and he like paints the screen door with this batter. And then he's like, and then basically you electrify it. <laughs> and then it's just like <laughs> you electrify <laughs> a screen door covered in batter. And that's how you make ba- panko breadcrumbs. And it's, you know, it's not exactly the same thing, but right, he's right. like, I understand now, but you're like, I that's insane. That's how you make panko. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah. And, and that's part of it too. That made, I think that was part of that, like got me so in, into cooking. And then my memory is that this sort of like happened at the same time. Now you were cooking before me and I was just being a drunk snowboarder. And then like (laughs) started getting into cooking and it was like, whoa, whoa. And we cooked together and it's just like, oh, fuck yeah, dude, this is so much fun. It took like cooking was a thing that we were doing for like to fill like a creative niche, I think, you know, like we were kind of like, I want to be creative, but like might as well do it with food. Fucking love food. Food's good. Yeah. And then. It was like, oh, learning is stimulating and like the uh, the other creative part. And it gives me more to keep going. Sure. I, I don't think I'm exaggerating here. I think that's what we're saying. And then it was just yeah. like, now it's just like one of those things that we do with people. Because you said you that that was one of the things you do with the people you went up to uh, when you went ice. One of the times you went ice fishing this year, right? It's like yep. a big thing you connect with them is cooking. Yeah, for sure. Which, yep. Oh man. It it and it's so fun because that I don't know if you'd like thrive to get their acceptance, but you like it's it's something you want to do, right? It's it's something creative that you can do and get instant feedback on. Yeah. Right at sure. the table, right? Uh-huh. Yep. I always like to hear. I'm always hard on myself too. And people don't yeah, understand yeah. that where like, I want them to say like, wow, that was really good. But when I know that it's not the best I could do and somebody's like, wow, that was good. I'll be like, could have been better. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and I can't even help myself. And they're just like, right. don't be like that. And just be like, no, you don't understand. Like, I'm not, I'm not like self deprecating, you know, like sitting there just like, Oh, poor, I suck. You know, <laughs> I just know I could have done better. Right. And I, it bums me out. Or that, that you, you have done get, better. Right. Right. And it bums me out that you didn't get to experience my best. You got right. A yes. slightly worse version. Right. And that bums me out because I'm, I'm striving to not be that guy at the restaurant. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to be that guy, not giving you that one. That's just like, Oh, that wasn't like it was that one time. Right. You're just trying you know? to do even better or exactly as you did the last time you had the best one that you made. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that, that was the part that 
I don't need that feedback. It's like, I want that feedback to get better at it. Like that. Right. So, so like what got us, what got us cooking has now, you know, the question that I started the topic with of what got us cooking has built into like what keeps us cooking in a way. Right. And it's that, it's that feedback. It's that like constant getting better. It's that cooking almost as a hobby. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It this is, is a the hobby. first uh, this is happening right now in real time. This is the first time I ever really thought about <laughs> that. But like, yeah, of course yeah. it fucking is. Like yeah, I have for things. sure it's a hobby. Cause there's there's certain days where like where I know I'm gonna be around for that day and I'm like I'm yeah. gonna make something that takes hours. Yeah. Yes, you know? dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so this is this is something that I wanted to, to ask about, like to connect the, the, what, what got us cooking to, to the, the question of what got us cooking. I wanted to, to, to figure out the evolution, right? Like this, the line. So here's one, one example tying to what you said. I got a full, we got a full chicken, full chicken like bone in dead chicken, <laughs> not like live chicken. Oh, right. So we got a whole chicken, like a fryer chicken, right? Yep. And we were going to make a uh, chicken soup out of it, but there's a catch. I got to break it down because the chicken breasts are getting turned into chicken nuggets for the baby by sure. integrating cauliflower into them. So okay. that way, you get your veggies and your protein in one thing. Trick the kid sure. into eating veggies. That's the whole goal. Yep. But get the whole chicken so that way we can make fucking soup out of it. And when I started cooking, it was learn the it was like, oh yeah, if you take these ingredients and you combine them, you make the thing. Yep. And now it's what are, what are the ingredients? Like what's the base ingredient and how did it get there and make it into the thing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I get you. It was, it's more like, so I guess here, I'll, I'll just put it a little bit more. It's like when I started cooking, it was like, get a chicken breast, chop it up, put in some flour, fry it, put it in this sauce that is, you know, this, this, and this, and you have Kung Pao chicken. Sure. Okay. Before, I would have just bought it in the bag, put it in the microwave. <laughs> right. Now, it's buy the whole chicken, get the breast off of it, turn the breast into chunks, flour it, whatever. Figure out what to do with the bones. Figure out what to do with the legs. Figure out what to do with the thighs. It's the bigger, you know, like right. the breast came from the whole chicken. Here's one thing you can do with the breast. Now figure out what to do with the rest of the fucking chicken. Right. Yep. Yep. And that's another thing that saves you the money too when you're trying to figure everything out. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's what I'll do too. Sometimes where I'll be walking through the grocery store or whatever and I see an ingredient. Mm -hmm. I just go, God damn, that looks good. I don't know how to make it. I'm going to get it and I'm going to figure it out. You know, I started, I, I got into short ribs that way. Oh, no shit. I'm just like, holy shit, dude. Those, like, the marbling on short ribs are beautiful. Yeah. Wow, those look good. Yeah. I can't recall it right now, but I'm... uh, So if you get boneless short ribs, you can literally, like, swap that out in any form of, like, a roast or anything. Oh, shit. Okay. Next level, dude. You put, you, like, you want to have just, like, a roast and potatoes and carrots and stuff. Put short rib in there instead of, like, the other stuff, and it's like, holy fucking shit. Really? Dude, oh, fuck. okay. I ma- you can you can make them like barbecue style too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely heard of the, that. Mm-hmm. Because of the I've yeah, and they make them. I haven't tried this yet. That's the next one that I want to try. But you can get them at like the Asian restaurant too. You oh. can get like short ribs from the Asian restaurant, and those are supposed to be bomb. So I'd like to try that with like okay. the okay. Asian sauce. Yeah. But my my thing right now too is uh really experimenting with how like the different textures of things you know oh really yeah really learning that like Mm -hmm. you can take a chicken breast and Mm -hmm. bread it 
And it can be completely different because you can take a chicken breast and put it in the flour and then fry it. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. it. You can take chicken breast, egg wash it and put it in the flour. That's a completely different thing. Right. You can take chicken breast, dredge it in your flour, then egg wash it, then put it in the flour. And that's a completely different texture. Right. (laughs) You can make that chicken breast like four different ways with the exact same ingredients. Yes. And that to me is still like, what is going on here? And that's where like, I'm really trying to learn it. Like the, like sweet and sour chicken at the Chinese restaurant. Yes. Where it's got like that fluffy Yes. Batter on the outside. Yes. And you make chicken and you're just like, how do I accomplish that? Like, how yeah. do I get this? Yeah. You know, and it's like, and that's a batter. Yes. Instead of just dredging the flour, it's that's a batter that you're steering up. And right. You're steer, steering, steering up. up. Steering up. <laughs> Little dog. Steering up. Uh, steering up. <laughs> but, you know, uh, maybe that was the song about the omelets. Oh shit! We don't fold, then we steer it up. <laughs> Check out that remix know. coming later on Spotify yeah. on the Real AF TV <laughs> podcast <laughs> feed. Ham and cheese and egg, steer it up. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, yeah, you, you make a really like. You make the fan a fantastic point of like that is the thing that got us cooking and keeps us cooking, right? Is that level For that sure. like creativity of just like oh shit, dude, oh shit, and yeah, I continue to watch people, I continue to learn from people, I continue to look stuff up, I continue to experiment, I continue to fail, and I continue to learn, and it's just like shit, shit, dude. Yeah, this is fun and. Dude, and the cool part too is when you learn, there's like some of the stuff doesn't take a lot of ingredients. You know, right. you can go to somebody's right. house and they'd be like, I have this chicken. I don't know what to do with it. And then you'd be like, do you have flour and eggs? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, how would you like them? I can cook them like six different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I just, we were, because we don't have eggs, I just got, uh, we don't have eggs and we ran out of uh, breakfast potatoes. Like we just ran out of potatoes. Right. Yep. So I was like, wait a second. I think I can make some biscuits. Sure enough. Biscuits do not require eggs. There you go. <laughs> biscuits in like Boom. half an hour. Right. Yeah. Like flour, water, milk, whatever, you know, pick your poison. Right. Little baking powder done. Like, right. It's pretty much it butter of course but i mean yeah and bringing it bringing it full circle to when we were talking about like in the fish and stuff and the hot dish and stuff that's why minnesota hot dish even exists for you go into sure your, dude you go into your your pantry and your meat and you're just like what do i got i got hamburger i have noodle i have like I don't know, there's like three cans of soup in here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's and some, some tater there's tots. Some, yep. There's, there's some tots in the freezer. And oh, you know, yeah, I guess. Oh, you know, wouldn't do tater tots in the vegetable or in the in the noodles at the same time. Right. But it'd be like, but it'd be like, I got noodles. I got a can of green beans. Got a uh, can of mixed vegetables. A couple of things of soup here. Uh, some hamburger. <laughs> right, right, right. And then. Then you just go, yep. <laughs> yep. That, that's it. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to cook all of that and then I'm going to put it into a pan. I'm going to put it into like a, a 13 by 9 bacon dish. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is sprinkle cheese on top of that. We're going to throw it in the oven until that cheese browns. And then when it comes out, you eat it and you go, what is this? Can I get the recipe for this? And you're just like, there is no recipe. I have no idea what this is. I literally just threw together leftovers. You I just put are together lucky that it turned out find. this good. <laughs> yeah. I just put together everything I could find and then just seasoned it properly instead of oversalting it. And it's, it's not bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, before we get into all the leftover shit that we have definitely made, we should probably do the obligatory, uh, you know, go to realaf.tv. And 
that's where you can find all the stuffs. You can find us the social medias, the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And, uh, you know, it really F dot TV is really the center of where you can find us, but please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have videos coming out soon. I promise we are in the middle of bouncing back and forth an edit that will be out very soon. Yo, I promise. And with that all behind us.